Hello everyone, my name is James Blissmo, I'm the Berwick Town Manager, and I'm here for my regular occurring Town Manager update. We have, uh, to start this off, we have some good news for the manganese. The uh, manganese level is under the 0 .30 health advisory level for children, and it has been since August 14th. The current level is at uh, 0 0.099 uh, milligrams over liters. Um, it's the lowest it's been in quite a while. And um, it's been consistently under that, le under that level. Um, we're going to continue handing out drinking water until August 25th. Um, so the, the water right now ha does not have that level of manganese that causes the, um, the concerns for neurological effects. That, that starts at that 0.3 level. So if there's any questions on that, give me a call or email me. Uh, next piece of business, uh, last night the select board approved a proposal for a temporary support over Diamond Hill Bridge, also known as Praise Bridge. Uh, this is a temporary support. Um, it's at a lower cost, so we will not be um, going out for the bond that was approved at the last town meeting. This will give the town an opportunity to get on Maine DOT's work plan for 50-50 funding. There's a smaller chance, we're hopeful maybe with all the infrastructure funding, there might be 80-20 funding, um, but at the very least, to get on that main uh, DOT work plan in the next three or four years um, to be able to get that 50-50 funding. This temporary support is designed for five years, uh, depending on how things are going, an engineer can look at it uh, five years from now and determine that it has even further of a useful life. So um, the board and, and myself feel like this is a, a good solution in the short term to get to that longer term fix and, and keep it affordable for the town. I have some updates on the edge. Uh, pictured here is their phasing plan. Um, the red is phase one, which they're ready to wrap up pretty soon. That's what we call the L-shaped building. Uh, the building that has been been uh, been under development for the past several months. Uh, there are three businesses uh, ready to go or have already opened, and there are there are several other vacant um, storefronts within that building. So if you know anyone or if you can spread the word, uh, you can send them to me or send send them to Julie Kurt Curran at Great Falls Construction. Which is, again, spread the word. There's all kinds of different sizes in that building and they're ready to go. The orange in their phasing plan is phase two. The next building they're looking to construct, it's circled in red. It's 8 Main Street. This is a uh, approximately, it's a 3,200 uh, footprint, 3,200 square foot footprint, and it'll have, uh, it'll be mixed use with a commercial unit and nine or 10 residential units. And that part of that phase ties in with a drive-through for coffee and a bank as well. The next uh, phase three is in blue, phase four is in green, and five is pink, and six is yellow. To go along with the phasing plan, the town has dig a hole once, and we plan on following a similar phasing plan. As they develop, we wanna be developing simultaneously right along with them, just to make sure that when the road's all dug up and the work's happening, we're right there doing our side of, of the, the edge piece that is our responsibility. So that includes the big pieces, stormwater and underground utilities. We have been working with CMP pretty consistently over the past year or so. We've met probably five times to go over the plan. It's, pretty, it's, it's fairly complicated, uh, but it's, it's something that I've been thinking about almost nonstop for the past five years, just trying to figure out the puzzle pieces of stormwater, utilities, and then it's the fun part. It's putting the street back, it's streetscaping, street amenities, ornamental lights, street trees, things like that. Things that you see in a, in a picturesque New England downtown and village center. And it's really starting to show downtown. Now, downtown's starting to look really nice. Some other projects we're looking at, the Summersworth Barrick Bridge, that intersection, replacing the traffic lights with modern technology should help with traffic timings also modifying the intersections and the lanes to be optimized to make the most sense 
for what's needed for the capacity and keeping pedestrians safe and being able to circulate through the downtown and cars as well and bikes. Uh, Sullivan, School Street, Wilson Street, they all need sidewalks or improved sidewalks, crosswalks, site amenities like I, like I mentioned. And the, I've, I've included um, in one of my slides an itemized, li itemized list so you can get an idea of the breakdown of what it costs to do a, a segment, including what the utilities we estimate, um, cost of road construction, sidewalks, and the town has received several million dollars to this point to help with funding for these projects. And we think it's just the beginning in terms of the funding. Um, the town has been able to leverage studies, reports, community engagement to uh, further funding, and we plan on continuing that. Another important funding source is TIF, that's tax increment financing. I won't bore you with the mechanics of how that all works, but just know that it's a, it's a great mechanism to fund different projects at different, at different times. Um, the development program can be found on the town website. If you go on the town website under community development and planning and projects and reports, you can actually pull up the development program. You can pull up the dig a hole once. Um, we've archived many news stories. Uh, there's dozens of um, projects that are on there that I suggest checking out because you could uh, you could spend quite a few hours looking at what's out there, and I think you'll be surprised. With the TIF, um, the, the main thing we plan on doing with the TIF is to match the larger grants. Sometimes match funds are 20%, 5%, things like that. Last night, we utilized some TIF funding to support the Lawn Chairs event, which the Lawn Chairs event at, at its heart is to encourage getting people downtown. And what that means, once people are downtown, they're frequenting the businesses, we're highlighting the businesses. So um, part of the TIF can be used for economic development programs, but also it is for infrastructure, green space amenities, um, site amenities, and also a credit enhancement agreement that we have with JCS. And there's other credit enhancement opportunities that could be available um, for other uh, properties within the district. So if you, um, that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, you can give me a, uh, send me an email or give me a call. Thank you.